In today's macro photography tutorial, we're doing something really fun that you guys can easily do at home. We're shooting crisps or potato chips, depending on where in the world you are. Stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adaptalux and welcome back to another macro photography tutorial where today we are shooting crisps or potato chips if you're in America. Uh, these are really, really common things that you're probably going to have in your home, but they make a really fantastic macro photography subject for several reasons which we're going to discuss in today's video and hopefully we'll come out with some weird looking abstract photos of uh, really close up surfaces of various different types of crisps. Now crisps do come in all sorts of different varieties. So I've got a big box here with all different types of crisps from crinkly ones to uh, curled over ones, even some vegetable crisps that are not made from potatoes. So uh, we're going to take a look at all of these really close up with a macro lens and using some really interesting lighting techniques to make them look a little bit otherworldly, a little bit abstract and hopefully create some really interesting shots. So we're not going to spend too long taking a look at all of these different types of crisps simply because there's, well, too much variety here uh, to go over every single one. But also you could just go down to your local snack aisle and take a look for yourself what's available. The main thing that I'm looking at here is the variety of different shapes and sizes, colors and textures. So we've got lots of different varieties of crisps here. I got all of these from Aldi, so they're all Aldi own brand ones. We've got some uh, cheese curls here which should be interesting. Um, not all of them are uh, potato chips, we've got some root vegetables with sea salt and these are all different colours as well so that's going to be really interesting. And then we've got different textures and uh, shapes of uh, crisps as well. So we've got some, some hoops, we've got some crinkly ones here and we've got some uh, lattice uh, cheese and onion crisps which are sure to be uh, quite interesting as well with a sort of cross hatch texture on them and I'm sure they're all going to taste nice as well. I think this is a great thing to be doing over Christmas time maybe uh, so that you can have all of these little snacks slowly being uh, eaten away while you're doing your photography. Now that we've taken a look at this huge selection of crisps, it's time to take a closer look at the macro photography equipment that we're going to need to shoot them. I'm shooting all of this on top of a table right here at home. So this is definitely something that you can repeat in your own home, maybe on a tabletop or maybe with your own macro photography setup. We don't need anything specific in terms of lenses or cameras. You can do this with a lot of different types of uh, macro equipment. The one thing that we do have in common is that we're going to need some lighting and we're going to need to get really close up to these crisps. First things first, let's talk about our camera and lens. Now I know that I've just said that it's not particularly important what camera you use or what lens you use, but it is important to get up close and that means a macro lens. This is a Takino 100mm f2.8 macro lens fitted to a Sony a7 III and that is getting me really, really close up to the surface of my crisp. You can see my crisp just over here being held in place. Um, we'll come to that in just a moment. but. Uh, being able to get nice and close up to the surface of the crisp is really important just to get all of that detail. And you can see here that I've actually got a really low angle across the surface, which really accentuates that uh, shallow depth of field caused by the macro lens. Now, if you want to eliminate that depth of field, you can try focus stacking, which is what this rail here is for. Um, you can move your camera through your image, taking shots as you go and stack them all later to get an image that is completely uh, in focus. We might try some of that with our crisps or they might look uh, nice and abstract just on their own. But either way, I'm going to be shooting on a tripod using my macro rail just in case. That also means that I need to keep all my, um, my subjects, my crisps steady and my background as well. That's where the macro subject holder comes in. This thing has flexible crocodile clips to hold everything in place. You can see that one is holding my crisp just here and then we've got two more holding the background in place. Now I do have lots of these background gradient cards uh, all in different colors so I can switch out the background 
to suit the kind of image that I want to go for. If I need a bigger background, I do also have them in uh, A4. So we've got A4 and A3 sizes to choose from, which should be more than enough to get a nice variety of backgrounds to match the variety of our crisps. So let me talk to you a little bit about our lighting today. Uh, the lighting is going to be a really important factor in getting our crisps to look a little bit different, a little bit more interesting, and not like the crisps that you've obviously seen before. Uh, we're going to be using the Adapts Look Studio macro lighting system. This is a, a modular system that allows you to add lights and move your lights exactly where you need them to be. And being able to move lights is really important for macro photography in general, but particularly for something like this, where the placement of the light is going to be really important for the final shot. So this is the uh, control pod, which houses all of the batteries, power control uh, for our lighting. And you can see that there's five ports in the front here, which means we can have five lights going at once, which is going to be really nice for our crisps. Into these ports, plug lighting arms. These are flexible, long light sticks. So we've got a uh, bendy gooseneck all the way along the arm and a nice bright light at the end. There's adjustable beam angle control on the end here as well. And if we want some diffusion, it's just a matter of magnetizing it onto the end of the arm. Everything here is magnetic and you can see there that I've got this light going in just a matter of seconds. Um, but I need to be able to mount this exactly where I need it and place my light really precisely pointing at my crisps. Now there's a couple of ways that we can place this into our setup. Uh, first of all, we can put it on top of the hot shoe. So this just slides on and then you can have your uh, lighting supported by the camera, but you can also place it down on a tripod. And I think that's the way that I'm going to shoot today because I want the, uh, the ability to move my lighting around my subject, maybe bring it in from the back of the crisps, backlight them a little bit or uh, have one from one side and one from another. So fixing my lighting to my camera would restrict me a little bit there. So I'm going to be uh, shooting with my camera and then my lighting separately. Having my lighting off camera on a little mini tripod just here gives me a lot of placement options on where my light is going to be pointing. You can see here that I've got one of my uh, root vegetable crisps out now, and it's a really strange shaped crisp. It's really long and all curled over, probably because it's a vegetable and not a uh, potato. Uh, so it's going to be a really interesting um, shot. Uh, but I think what makes this more interesting than the others is because we're lighting it from underneath. Uh, you can see that that white lighting arm there is actually shining up and through the crisp. So having light and the ability to place the light uh, exactly where we want it to be is really important for getting strange abstract shots of our crisps like this one. Uh, so I'm actually looking down the length of this crisp with light uh, glowing from inside the crisp. Um, now that does leave me with a little bit less light than usual because the crisp is taking a lot of it away, but that glow from the inside just supplemented by uh, a nice diffused light source on the top here uh, to add a little bit of extra color and um, light onto the edges at the top here. Um, that looks really, really cool. So having my light off camera and being able to move it around and place it exactly where I need it is really, really useful for this type of subject that requires a lot of experimentation. One of the most interesting things I'm finding with this shoot is just the sheer variety of different uh, photographs that you can get from crisps. Uh, there's a huge variety of different crisps, obviously, uh, but you really don't think about that uh, difference in how these things are made until you're getting up close and really finding all of the differences uh, in the camera. For example, we've got uh, these uh, these cheese curls uh, are obviously curled over and uh, uh, these root vegetables are different colors, different textures, and also a little bit curly, a little bit more angled than some of the others. Um, but there's also all of those coatings as well, all of the flavors that go into these crisps. All of those look slightly different when you get really up close. Some of them have larger pieces of salt on them. Some of them uh, don't have any salt at all. Some of them have strange colors. Uh, there's a lot to explore, especially if you do, do manage to get a nice variety of crisps.
crisps. And it's also a nice cheap macro subject. You can go into your supermarket and grab just a few small bags. You don't need a huge amount of uh, the actual crisps. Um, you can get the, the really, you can even get kids packs, but try and get a variety of different types of crisps because there's a real joy in getting up close to each one and figuring out a really interesting way to shoot it to show off the unique textures and colors and shapes. So as you can see, I'm making an almighty mess. My hands are all covered in oil and salt and things like that. Crisps all over the table. There's uh, lots of different packets open and a lot of crisps have been eaten as well. But I'm really enjoying myself with these different varieties of crisps. Um, placing them down at different angles is particularly interesting. So these crinkled ones, for instance, if you place them at a low angle uh, to the camera uh, and set your lighting just right and with these background cards, you can make this look almost like a landscape. I think they look like um, rows of crops on a farmland or perhaps some sort of alien hills or something like that. Um, the lighting is really important to get that right with this single white lighting arm acting like the sun. So uh, you don't have multiple light sources in real life. You only have that one, which is the sun. So if you want a landscape like this, you just need a single lighting arm. The back one uh, is actually lighting the background up so that we get this nice blue color in the background for for the sky. Um, so there's lots to be done here to experiment with different lighting for your different crisps and for the different angles that you're looking at them with. That really is helped by the, uh, the macro subject holder here as well. Um, well, it's a little bit strong. Sometimes you can see that it's uh, sort of crunched a few of my crisps, um, but it does hold these nicely in place. And then you can manipulate those arms to find the exact angle that you're looking for. I think it's fair to say that crisps are not the most obvious and forthcoming macro subject, um, but it's definitely something that most people will have in their homes or at least have easy access to. And it turns out they do make really interesting macro subjects. It's something that's uh, got a lot of variety. Uh, it's nice and cheap and accessible. So it's definitely something that you can follow along with at home. And I have had a lot of fun shooting these, especially with that variety of the different types of crisps available. There's really endless types of um, abstract shots that you can get from them. Exploring all of those curves, the different textures and colors uh, is really fun in macro. And this is a fun shoot to do if you've got people around as well, maybe a partner or some kids, because um, unlike most of the time with our macro photography, I think they'll be more than happy to help you tidy up and maybe get some tasty treats along the way. I'd like to know from you guys whether or not you enjoyed uh, this shoot and my photographs, whether you do anything differently and do make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you're here for more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. For now, that is all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.